Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Wednesday, June 20th. And um, yesterday was a gap up and run yesterday. Uh, we uh, rallied in, in anticipation of additional QE3, or at least the Operation Twist continuing. Um, markets are front-running the Fed. Uh, their rate decision will be out at 12.30 today, and Bernanke will be holding a press conference at 2.15. Two, at and that's going to be closely watched to see any kind of news. Um, a lot of the analysts are saying that there will not be a QE3, and um, they will not be extending any of their asset purchasing program. Um, if that's the case, I would imagine the markets um, uh, will take some sort of profits off the table. I mean, we have been running uh, for the last six or seven days. I'll get into the charts in a moment. Um, but it's uh, crazy to see how the markets are just taking on all of this risk at these levels. Now, that does not mean the market cannot go higher here, uh, or at least test the highs into that 14 area in the S&P. Uh, I, as a, a market participant, as a trader, I'm looking at taking off risk, reducing my exposure, and uh, looking to, for the best setups. Um, as far as swing traders are concerned, uh, you know, tighten up the stops and uh, just ride this momentum going up. Now, we've been up for six or seven days on no volume. Um, however, internals yesterday were pretty decent. They were about a little over five to one buyers versus sellers. And we had like 97 new highs versus five uh, new lows. So that's nice. That's definitely what you'd like to see um, in a good, healthy market. But I do not think we have a healthy market here. Uh, this is all based on the Fed printing money, and that's the reason why we're at these levels. If if that did not happen, um, I could see the S and P down to uh, you know 1,000, uh, 1,050, Dow Jones around uh, nine, ten thousand. So, uh, but but we trade what we see, and uh, we don't want we do not want to get affected by what's going on with uh, with the news pundits talking about um, what their decisions are and what they're thinking about. So. Um, Right in front of me is the S&P chart, is the uh, spiders chart, five minute, and it just kind of gives you a good idea of what most of the day was like. And again, um, we had a gap up in this area, and once we had this area uh, taken out in the first 15 minute candle, uh, we had new water flow, and again, this never filled the gap. Usually we get a little backfill and then move higher, so we knew that momentum was going to be strong pretty much the day. Uh, but again, we are overbought, so the risk of a reversal is quite um, imminent. Now, um, once right around 10.45 held, there was absolutely nothing to do all the way up in here until this little push-up. And right in this area here, and as you can see how the markets are jittery, and this is why I keep saying being long, be careful here, um, G20 leaders, uh, some of the G20 leaders from Germany stated that they would had no interest of buying euro bonds. Well, whether it be um, a rumor or not, markets actually took a little bit of a nosedive here. 15 minutes uh, started selling off, but then kind of base and then rallied into the close here. Sold off a little bit at here at the end of the day. But you could see that markets were really, uh, um, but looking at volume, which is critical for me, I don't see um, uh, that much enthusiasm as far as a volume and saying, hey, you know what, we got to buy into this. We have a new uptrend. Uh, I think I think this little current uptrend is a little tired, um, but that does not mean that I'm not looking to buy stocks, um, uh, you know, at these levels as well. Just keeping a tight stop and making sure that we have um, we protect ourselves. Now, um, S and P. Let's go to the uh, let's go to some of these internals, and this is where I'm saying that this is the the McClellan oscillator, very reliable, very reliable uh, indicator, and reads overbought, oversold. Now I've been stating the last couple of days that the um, um, we are becoming into this overbought territory and this is right around this area here now we have just taken this out and if you could see here how many times in the last year we've been up in these levels here market sold off we've been here market sold off here market sold off and right up in this area here market sold off and that that wasn't a quite overbought but um, now we're at these lofty levels here, and I do believe that a market is imminent of a sell-off. Um, now, not saying that it could happen today, tomorrow. Usually during Fed days, um, usually the first move is faded. So, for instance, if the market um, does like what the Fed says, the market will rally and then sell off, usually the next day on a seller news type thing. If the market, uh, they don't like what the Fed said, they're probably going to sell them off and 
probably sell them more for a few days before they look to uh, buy this again. And again, it all depends on what the Fed says. Uh, I wouldn't, uh, I, I don't trade news, Fed news, um, so we'll be sidelined pro pretty much most of the afternoon. Um, but this is very important here. So you could see where we are. This is the S&P line chart. Very important indicator telling us that we're very over, overboard here and we need to be cautious. S&P bullish percent index, um, very bullish here. And I did mention this to you um, last week when I said, hey, you know, the bullish percentage is bullish. Here's the S&P line chart, and here's our RSI 14. We were deeply oversold, and now we're rallying. And we're not even overboard, actually, uh, in this indicator. We can move higher. So um, that's something really to think about and to take note of. Let's take a look at another indicator here. Now, this is the, um, in the VIX. And if you remember, I put in, I had an in, I had a head and shoulders on the VIX, and here was the inverted head and shoulders on a line chart. And as you know, we uh, did get confirmation on inverted head and shoulders, and we are moving higher. So this actually held true here, and our um, we're just about at our target right here on this head and shoulders pattern. It probably reads about oh about six points. So six points from there, you're looking about um, right around this area here. So right here. We're pretty much close to objective target on the head and shoulders pattern. So that's something to take note of as well. Um, last indicator, our uh, momentum bar chart, momentum indicator, very reliable indicator. We are at 101.60. Um, again, anything above 101 is overbought, and we were looking for a pullback. So uh, caution here on the longs. Definitely, if you're uh, if you're swing trading, fine. You want to ride out the uh, ride out the bumps in a row. That's great. I would just tighten up the stops. Uh, day traders, uh, what we're looking for is obviously if we're, we are long and we want to play the trend. We don't want to be counter trend trading unless you have some sort of capitulatory move up or, or down, and you're looking to fade that move. Um, I like buying trends. I like buying pullbacks, selling rallies into um, into a trend. So um, today's going to be uh, uh, keep the palette dry. And um, actually, just make making sure that um, that we're protecting ourselves here because anything can happen. And it's uh, quite clear that what you have is um, um, is is just. I would like to say, in a nutshell, is that be very careful here. Um, you know. The, this whole market is news driven on uh, on Europe and what's happening right now. We have the G20 going on, and now we have the Fed today. So no reason that they get into a position, a large position. If we're looking for a day trade, trying to scalp a few trades to try to make some money, absolutely. Uh, other than that, I uh, I would just kind of stand aside today and then just see what happens and kind of take that move from here. Okay, so let's get into the daily charts, and this is really a critical um, critical um, chart that I like to look at, and is the Russell. Now, the Russell 2000 is definitely a gauge of risk, uh, no question about it. And remember I mentioned that we had some market divergence, that Russell was not participating as much to the upside as the transportation sector, the uh, Dow Jones, and the S&P, and the NASDAQ. Well, um, obviously, and I said, that doesn't mean that it can't catch up. And sure enough, it did, right? So we broke out of here. We broke out of this little congestion area, and we broke to the upside in a big way. Volume in the in the index was fine, but a lot of the small caps really weren't producing too many uh, too many moves up, and they weren't on, on on heavy volume. They did move up, but it wasn't on on heavy volume. I looked at a lot of stocks yesterday, um, picked a few of them, but anything other than than a move higher, uh, I like to try to play the indexes here when. Um, when you have a little uncertainty and, and stocks aren't really moving, because sometimes you get the index move and uh, and the stocks really aren't moving as as well as the indexes are concerned. So here's the uh, Russell, here's the Dow Jones. Now the Dow Jones here is really concerning here, lack of volume. As you see on the on the Russell, we had uh, decent volume, but here lack of volume. So we had a big move up, and the last several days, six seven days has been all up on no volume. So that's a concern to me. Uh, I'm a big volume guy, and I like watching what, what volume is doing. And, of course, uh, since the uh, financial crisis, 2008, 2009, volume has been diminishing, but still volume holds key on the truth of the move here. So this is something that's concerning a little bit. But nonetheless, we've been up. Now, we're kind of stretched here. Usually, um, we look, you know, three days up, we look to start shorting stocks. In this type of environment, you're looking for six, seven days to start shorting stocks. But, however, um, 
take a look at this we're up high here we're up into um into uh nosebleed territory so to speak in the six days we did uh, break above the 50 bullish but i think it needs a rest now even if the market uh wants to move higher it's healthy to have a rest here um s p 500 again look at this lackluster volume six days up one two three four five six above the 50 above the 20 and above the 200 very very bullish um but i think the next pullback we get some sort of a decent pullback we can buy into we could probably test the 1400 area here and these are the spiders but i um but the s p very correlated obviously the, the minis or the spx um so i would definitely look to see um some sort of a pullback if you're swing trading to add to your position and or to get long the market um, but again guys if the Fed does not uh, hint on additional QE I would success I would expect we get a decent sell-off um, pretty hard sell-off for that matter all right transportation one of the big leaders here very important volume definitely increasing to the upside I mentioned that uh, MACD stochastics and again remember I mentioned we're not even over overbought yet in our stochastics a big engulfing candle out of this little pennant area and we had follow through today now here's a Bollinger Band just to kind of gauge that we're overboard oversold that does not mean that the market can roll over right now but um, this is getting into uh, a, a, we had a large move for two days um, even if we took out this area here I'll be cautioned here for a little bit of a pullback but definitely a leader in the indice is the transportation sector gauges the economy very important um, I'd be looking at this sector uh, going forward to give some sort of a hint of what's happening. All right, that's really about it, guys. Let's see what happens uh, today. It's going to be very interesting. I have a full report tomorrow, um, a bunch of charts, and um, again, keep your palate dry here. Sit on the sidelines. If if uh, if you you see nothing to do, no sense pushing it. Let's get the Fed out of the way, and then we can really start trading some stocks. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.